Okay, a roll call taken. taken. Uh, public comments. Here are no public comments, so we've taken care of that. Approval of the minutes of the 12.04.19 regular meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. No corrections or changes. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Introduction and approval of hiring firefighter EMT Matthew Travis and firefighter paramedic Jacob Kanowski. Good morning. Uh, Jacob, Matthew, coming up. Uh, so this is Jacob Kanowski. Uh, this is Matthew Travis. Uh, they are our two newest hires. Uh, Matthew comes to us from the Eau Claire area. Uh, he would work with Chippewa Fire District uh, for a period of time. Uh, very happy to have him. He's currently in EMT, finishing up his medic. Uh, and as soon as he passes his test, he'll, he'll be a medic with us. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, Jacob Kanowski comes to us from the Rapids area. Um, he has been um, with Nakusa as an EMT, as well as Port Edwards. Um, he is a paramedic. Uh, both have associate degrees. And uh, we're very excited to have them on board, and we ask for your approval. Thank you. So now I'm going to do each of you individually. And so we'll do you <laughs> first, Matthew, right? Oh, God. See, then I got to get out of That's getting harder and harder. Um, I'd like you to repeat after me. I. I. <laughs> Matthew Travis. Matthew Travis. <laughs> um, at least he takes direction. <laughs> Do hereby declare. Do hereby declare. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will hereby support the Constitution of the United States. And the state of Wisconsin. And the state of Wisconsin. Have you ever read either one? No. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do this once and I did neither, and I asked to see the state of it anyway. Never mind. I swear that as a member of the Marshfield Fire and Rescue Department, I swear by. And then as a, man, as a member of the Marshfield Fire Department. Okay. Uh, in partnership with the community. In partnership with the community. To protect and preserve lives and property. To protect and preserve lives and property. Through assessment. Through assessment. Prevention. Prevention. Education. Education. And response. And response. I accept this self-obligation as my responsibility. I accept the self. I, I accept the self-obligation of my responsibility and to make these promises freely upon my honor. That's good, thank you, Matthew. Now I have a badge here that I think is supposed to get pinned on. It is, yep, and uh, his- Where is the pinner? Deputy Chief, uh, Troy Wyland is going to pin it on. Very good. You have it, hook it in the back. And you can take this so that you know what you promised. <laughs> straight in, yep, straight in. <coughs> You can't show pain. Good. Thanks, Chief. You ready? That's for us. Yeah, all right. Uh, Jacob. Jacob, your full name? Jim, I, Jacob Kanowski. I do hereby declare that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do hereby s swear to support the Constitution of the United, of the United States. States and the state of Wisconsin. And the state of Wisconsin. I swear that. I swear that. As a member of the Marshfield Fire and Rescue Department. As a member of the Marshfield Fire and Rescue Department. Uh, in partnership with the community. In partnership with the community. To protect and preserve lives. To protect and preserve lives. And property. And property. Through assessment. Through assessment. Prevention. Prevention. Education. Education. And response. And response. I accept this self-obligation. I accept this self-obligation. As my responsibility. As my responsibility. And make these promises freely. To and me. 
Sorry. <laughs> make these promises freely. To make these promises freely, and on my honor, and on my honor. Very good. Now we have uh, uh, another badge, and who will pin this one? Yep. Come on up. Oh. This will be his father. Okay. Now, when you uh, when you do this, oh no, you got to push it straight in if he yells. Looks <laughs> Yeah, I'm having trouble getting that open. Congratulations. Ryan, has go ahead. Ryan has completed his one year probation, um, and as such, uh, at the end of their one year, he gets his official helmet shield. He gets to turn in his recruit shield, and uh, he's now a full fledged member. You lasted a whole year. Yep. <laughs> That's sure. great. Anyway, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff is fun to do. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the uh, fire department bills. Chief. Um, in front of you, you got five sets of bills. Um, two of them uh, were signed on December 3rd by Commissioner Earl. Uh, one was a 2019, one was a 2020 set of bills. Uh, second or third set, sorry, signed by Commissioner Earl on the 16th um, of December. And then Commissioner Keo signed two sets of bills on January 6th. 2019-2020 as well. Uh, throughout all of the bills, uh, several purchases. Um, a lot of it was uh, end of year uh, cleanup, um, and uh, we ended up purchasing uh, two new refrigerators. Uh, we purchased one with the 2019 budget, one with the 2020 budget. Uh, it's a budgeted item. Uh, our refrigerators. Uh, are original to the building and um, stopped working in certain areas um, but other than that everything else in there seemed to be pretty much um, straightforward and, and self-explanatory but I'd be happy to answer any questions and ask for your approval <coughs> comments or questions we need a roll call would you please Myers yes Earl yes Meese yes Gershman yes Keel. yes thank you 
So we can pay those bills. I suspect a check has already been written and sent. But anyway. Please to hire my bills. Good morning. Good morning. You'll have numerous sets of bills in front of you, uh, kind of finishing up the end of the year. And there's also some 2020 uh, bills that were included or that were signed uh, in the last two months of the year. A couple things to bring to your attention. A 9F, there is a fairly substantial ammunition purchase. Uh, based on our inventory, we will usually try to put off that purchase of ammunition towards the end of the year. Uh, kind of depends on where our, um, where our budget is sitting. Uh, we we're able to purchase everything we needed though with that uh, late purchase. On 9G, there was some tra training for our canine units. Normally our, our canines would go down to Indiana for recertification. Over the last two years, uh, the trainers from Indiana have actually been coming up to the Wausau area and recertifying a large batch of uh, the dogs that have all been purchased in Indiana. Uh, this is a cost savings, even though it's a substantial um, cost. At this point, it would have been larger had we had to send the officers down to Indiana with their vehicles to train and such. So. On 9J, there is a payment installment to Priority Business. This was for part of the key card readers that we had installed in the building um, through the budget resolution that was drafted and approved by this body. On 9P, there was a purchase of a, um, of a RAM or a door breacher for the armored rescue vehicle. Uh, this was a $3,000 purchase. Um, it was not budgeted for, but we had money in the budget to make this purchase. <coughs> A large portion of this purchase was donated by Kafka conveyors. Um, all of the labor and some of the materials were donated. Um, there was just the $3,000 for some, um, some of the additional materials that were needed. Uh, this will be used for um, if we needed to safely breach a door without exposing our personnel to it um, and uh, other, I guess, crisis actions that might, might need to be taken. And then you'll see on 9U through 9BB, there's just various subscription charges that uh, come in at either the end of the year or the beginning of 2020. Um, some of them substantial, but those were all budgeted for. And I'd be happy to answer any questions, otherwise look for your approval. Thank you, and a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any comments or questions about the uh, police department bill? Hearing none, we require a roll call. Myers? Yes. Earl? Yes. 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 Hirschman? Yes. Keel? Yes. Thank you. And thank you, commissioners. Um, next, and chief, uh, next item on the agenda um, is uh, fire department activities and training reports and correspondence. Um, so for the month of uh, December, several EMS ride-alongs, uh, the schools are now starting to let their students uh, out into uh, the clinical environment. So we're starting to see a lot of paramedic uh, students come through, EMT students. Um, 10A uh, Leadership Marshfield was here for Public Safety Day. Uh, Deputy Chief uh, Bacus and Deputy Chief Fleddy took the lead on that uh, and uh, went over very well, a lot of positive comments. Uh, on 10B, uh, Redshift participated in a, a community-wide smoke detector initiative, um, getting out and installing 63 detectors with the Red Cross volunteers uh, in 33 different homes. Um, very well received by um, the community, uh, and uh, we we're very happy to be able to partner with Red Cross. On this. Uh, you'll notice in your packet, uh, we had our first ever ugly sweater day here. Um, I will say uh, more people participated than I actually uh, anticipated. Um, it was well received. Uh, definitely uh, had a good day with that. Uh, we had potlucks with it uh, and uh, everybody uh, had, a, had fun. Uh, the monthly statistics are in there. Uh, there are several donations and checks, um, thank you cards. <coughs> and I think, uh, I think that's about all. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Chief. Are there any questions or comments? I just wanted to make a comment. I know there was some 
correspondence about this, but you know, I'm very proud to serve on this body. And you know, when there's events like the, the fundraiser, I think it's really important to let us know because I could participate with a little bit of advance notice and, and you know, really show our support for the initiatives that you're doing when it comes to fundraising, sort of outside the box. I just wanted to emphasize that. Yeah, that's fine. I put it up on Facebook. Um, you know, Not a Facebook girl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's uh, I'm the only one in the world. I'll tell oh, you no. About, you know. No, we got a couple of guys here that are, but, um, but I definitely will um, let everyone know. Do, do we have, is there some process where, I'm just trying to think about how often, how we're supposed to be notified on that. Is he giving other, just in the past, we've had an understanding of the fundraiser, we approve it, but I know you apply for grants and sometimes we're not going to be aware of it too. I just, I wonder if we should just tighten up some policies so that we're aware of it. I mean, what do you think? Um, I, it, you know, I guess I, I don't really know. Um, the McDonald's one, McDonald's approached us and asked if, if we wanted to um, work there that night. Um, and uh, it was a good time. Um, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we were able to raise about $500. I know PD has done that at McDonald's before for K9 a few United nights. Did it a couple of years ago. Yeah. Came up. yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not emailing um, you guys ahead of time. That was my fault. Didn't even think of it. Um, if that's something that you know uh, we need to, to do ahead of time, we certainly can put it in our steps in our process. Yeah, I, I just don't think it hurt anything because you know, like even at a chat presentation, you know, maybe maybe we would want to be present and have to thank them also. So. Or when people some some people ask us like sure. oh you're on the police like did you know about this thing and you're like mm. it doesn't make us sure. look yep no. like we're as engaged as we want to yeah be. this one was it was totally on me I didn't even honestly uh, think of well I think the chief has identified and sort of it's it's something he's not used to thinking about yeah. and yep. you know think about it yep it'll be on the Appreciate it. And that was for Freddie the fire truck. Yes, <laughs> Freddie the fire truck. And you, how much you money? money for Freddie? Right. What's Freddie, that? Freddie's paid for. Freddie is paid for with the Enbridge and with Enbridge, uh, the Marshfield Clinic, um, McDonald's. How much money yeah. did it require to get Freddie? Like the, the, Freddie the fire truck was ten thousand one hundred and seventy nine dollars. What does Freddie, what does Freddie, Freddie actually do? Freddie is uh, <laughs> Freddie is um, it's it's a fire truck robot that is controlled by a firefighter. So when we go out and we do educational presentations, when we do dairy fest, when we do uh, any different events, we can take this robot and we can talk to the kids about safety at their level. Um, the little kids love these. Uh, these robots have been around in education for a long, long time. Um, I think the bus company has one. Or they have access to one that's a school bus to talk about school bus safety. So we talk about fire safety and everything with them. And, um, it's in uh, a cartoon voice. Uh, we can read stories to them if we want or, or whatever. So there's just there's a lot of um, a lot of educational uh, things that we can do with. So it kind of rolls into the classroom. Mm -hmm. and speaks through. Mm -hmm. Yep. Kind of like your version of the MRAP, right? Yeah, just very small. <laughs> small. Just very, very small. <laughs> not as bold. Yeah, yeah, no. And I wish I thought that was funny. <laughs> All right, thank you, Chief. Now, number 11 is approval of APS Fire Station Alerting System Agreement. Um, yeah, so the um, in the 2020 <coughs> CIP, we had included uh, floor repair on the apparatus floor um, that was approved and then uh, we started having uh, component failures to our station alerting system uh, the station alerting system is um, initiated through dispatch so when dispatch gets a 911 call and they call us out to respond that's what pages up overhead uh, opens up the speakers lets everybody know that yes there is a call uh, and our crews can respond uh, the system that we currently have uh, is uh, original to the building. 
there was no extended maintenance or contracts with it. Um, and as such, we are several versions of software behind and the hardware is not even manufactured anymore. Um, we had a component fail uh, this past year. We actually ended up having to purchase a refurbished unit from Phoenix Fire Department just to get this one section working. Um, so in discussions with um, Pete, um, we felt the uh, alerting system was a higher priority than the floor at this point. Um, so working through channels, uh, we were able to get the uh, alerting system in, push the floor off a year. Uh, we're gonna do minor repairs to the floor this year. Uh, but this uh, agreement is really um, the first step before Dan Kinnick, um, who we're working with, can put it out for bid. So, um, and I can certainly let Pete talk more. This is his baby. Um, if you have any specific questions or whatever, otherwise we ask for your approval. I think Chief pretty much said it all in, in talking with a Pete, or I'm sorry, Phoenix, um, U.S. Digital Designs, which designs a Phoenix system, which is what we have. Um, I had a hard time even getting them to talk to me on the phone. Uh, they tried for years and years, apparently, with previous administration to try to get us under a service contract. And they were upset to the point where they just considered our system abandoned. I finally got them to talk to me, <laughs> which was good, uh, to repair this one part up in the ceiling. Um, and uh, they, they told me on the phone, listen, you're, you're, you've never had a software update. This is a computer system, right? So that's, that's what actually what alerts us. So it's had no firmware updates, no software updates. They no longer make any of the components. So there's components all over the station that help control this. Um, just like the message board up there is a component up there. None of this is manufactured anymore. And like Chief said, we had to actually get a refurb unit out of Phoenix, Arizona just to get the system up and working. Um, so that pushed me to start looking at different different vendors, different companies out there. And actually the, the Phoenix G2 unit that we currently have was the most expensive, even though we have wiring and everything else in here, which pushed, pushed us to go to APS, um, station alerting. Um, instead of message boards, you're gonna see PC and TVs that actually display maps of where we're headed to. Um, it can, do everything from who's on the call, where they're going, <coughs> display weather information, traffic information, you name it. So, um, provide some more information at your fingertips, I guess, if you will. So, what we're looking for is just approval to move forward with this process. Um, as Chief said, we're gonna do some minor repairs on the floor. I have that material here. It's gonna be a, a thin coat of epoxy to, to stop the cracking and spalling out on the floor. And then we're looking at 2021 to finish the floor completely. So um, I guess what I'm looking for for this is just to move forward with the um, the uh, proposal of the budget process, or the, uh, not the budget process, but the uh, bid process, thank you. Can I ask you just a couple follow-up questions? So part of it, I, I, you know, do, do we have some of the responsibility because we just didn't maintain it? I mean, that's a general question. That's probably what happened, right? We yeah. just didn't maintain it. Yes, there was, yeah, um, like Pete had said, uh, you know, they had contacted several times to to put in this agreement. It was never done, um, and uh, it's just way beyond its useful life now. Okay. I should should mention part of this agreement here includes the service. The service, yeah. The annual for, for yeah. one year, and then we just make sure we upgrade Yes. So it would be a budget item. Correct. Moving forward. Yes. Yep. So, and that's the other thing about APS. So, APS is service agreement, I believe, is like seven hundred and fifty dollars, as opposed to the Phoenix system we currently have, which was like twenty two hundred dollars, twenty three hundred dollars. So, it's so far cheaper. I mean, you did all your diligence on the new system. Ready? I have a question um, on the APS contract. The price was fifty one six. Uh, but yet in the uh, budget, um, uh, the letter that we got from from Scott said that uh, they are going to put 80000 in as a budgeted amount for this. Yep. Is, is the balance going to be used to fix the floor? No, the balance is the electrician's costs. 
So, so contract just materials. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. This, the, yeah, the 50,000 is just a system, and then what they typically do is hire a local uh, electrician, mm -hmm. um, and that's what the bid process is actually for. Is okay. for for the actual work mm -hmm. running the wire, installing the new speakers, uh, you know, run, you know, doing all that stuff. Basically, they have to run all new wire to everything, um, okay. and that that estimated amount um, for the electrical is based on APS's recommendation of what they think it's going to cost. It could definitely come in less. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> uh, the document from APS is dated. 20th of September 19 and um, on the second page item number after item number 12 it says this estimate's valid for 30 days is this going to affect anything um no I, in fact we keep on this has been a working document okay. um i've been working with dan connect through the board of public works and um okay. we've been working through this document and working with mark mcneil who's our salesman through aps and yeah, this this is an on, it's been an ongoing process. I think we're finally to the point where we've got it narrowed down to exactly what we need um, in the station. So there were cuts and additions <coughs> and stuff needed to this to make it work for our station. <coughs> Brandon, yeah. The the only follow up question I had. So you did evaluate on that? Yes. 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 You did. Thanks. Yeah. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Uh, that would require a roll call. Yes. Myers. Yes. Earl. Yes. Meese. Yes. Gershman. Yes. Keel. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Taken care of. Item 12. Discussion and approval to look at a partnership with MSTC for the training center. Um, so this um, this topic. Um, is not to approve entering into the partnership. It's just allowing us to to move forward and, and work with them and look um, at this. We've had a partnership with Mid State since 2006 with the training center. Um, it's a, it was a 10 year um, contract or agreement, and then it was a, just a year to year. And if anybody wanted out, they could. Um, recently, we've started talking with Mid State. Uh, they're very interested in upgrading the training center. Um, making it uh, more accessible um, for uh, fire classes up in this end. Um, so I get what we're looking for is just to basically continue the talks um, in moving forward with this uh, and being able to get a few items into the CIP. Uh, that process has started there. Uh, the items are due the first week of February. Um, it's a it's a win-win uh, from from what we can see uh, because not only do we get upgrading equipment uh, and training props for our firefighters uh, we get to work with uh, or we get to see fire students coming up as uh, potential future hires as well uh, so really all we're looking for is the yep, go ahead continue working with them uh, really start diving in and talking uh, the original agreement uh, was uh, one where Mid-State contributed X number of dollars over a certain number of years uh, to help build what we currently have. Um, you know, we would love to be able to upgrade uh, that burn building. Uh, not only do we use it, PD uses it for um, their tactics training, um, so it can definitely be uh, a multi Department uh, uh, facility, but uh, again, not looking for an actual approval of a contract with Mid State, more of approval to continue moving forward and put items in the CIP. Okay, thank you. Um, when you, you would uh, finish the discussions and come to a point where you want an agreement. Mm -hmm. That would come to us. At yes. That time. Yep. And uh, Mid State would be more than happy to come in and talk as well. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Questions, comments. So Scott, you're going to want to. I know you're going to have a conversation with them, but separate from that, you're going to ask for some money in the CIP to upgrade the yeah, bathrooms, classroom. Yeah, we're right. going to we're going to uh, we're we're planning on putting money in CIP. Now, whether or not it happens is another story. Okay. Uh, but we want to start the process now so that. Uh, 
um, it's it's in the queue and um, we'll see what happens. Motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Um, this does not show that we need a roll call. So all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carried. Thank you. So keep rolling. Will do. Thank you much. Um, the next item is uh, ordinance amendment. Um, Deputy Chief Lenny is going to yep. handle it. Yes. Yep. So part of my job over the last couple of years has been to try to, uh, I guess, make our inspection process easier, our fire inspection process. Um, and part of that process is when we go into larger facilities with uh, hood suppression systems, uh, you know, hood systems, sprinkler systems, all these different fire protection systems, those all need to be tested, you know, on a periodic basis, either annually, biannually, whatever. Um, Part of the thing that slows us down a bit when we do this is trying to get that documentation that that's complete. A lot of times a person at the desk may not know where it is or, you know, um, at least the confusion actually kind of slows down the process. So what this ordinance is going to end up doing is it's just a, um, uh, just an amendment to what we already have is asking that we get that paperwork submitted to us or an approved um, will be uh, a company that we approve to, you know, have it sent to. And part of this stemmed from, um, for about a year, I've been looking at what's called the compliance engine. So what they do is they actually compile this information for you at no cost to us, no cost to the customer. It costs actually $15 for the third party testing facility to upload this um, to their, to their uh, database. Then that ends up getting transferred over to us. Again, it's kind of compiled. And learning that our new inspection program also works with the compliance engine and will one day integrate, they're already in the process of working on this, would even make it better. I mean, so if the sprinkler, so the documentation will be uploaded to the compliance engine that automatically integrate into our system. So when we pull up our inspection for that building, that either you know sprinkler system or hood system will be already in there. We'll be able to see that right right off right off the bat, right off the front. So um, to eliminate that that conversation of, you know, hey, can we can you get that paperwork or, or you know whatever. So um, that's kind of the whole basis behind this. And even if we don't decide to work with the compliance engine, um, this will at least get the paperwork coming our way. So I'll have that and I can download that into into our inspection program. So basically that's kind of the overview of, of what I'm asking for, why I'm writing that amendment, is to help streamline the process of the inspection. So, and I have included, I think I gave each of you a overview of the compliance and just a sheet there for you to kind of look at, so, and what they do. So I just have one question. Sure. So they're gonna push the data to you and then you're gonna push it out to them. Is that right? Do, do you like reminder notices or send us proof and test Sure. It? So the compliance engine actually takes care of all that as far as uh, notifications, um, reminders, and things like that. So it also helps the process streamline the process that way as, as well. So but it doesn't change the fact that you're still, still going to go on site. But we still have to do the inspection. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. This is just yes. eliminating yeah. Yeah. Okay. trying to find those documents mm -hmm. when we go out and get the inspection because most times we don't get them. Motion to approve. Okay. Okay. Just a quick question. Sure. If I remember the change in language in the ordinance, it will simply now be <clears throat> that somebody in the fire department has to set the expectation. Right, so what it will read is uh, section 6 27 under maintenance and testing, subsection 3 every automatic sprinkler system, fire detection, alarm system, smoke control system, exit lighting system, fire door, and other item of equipment shall be continuously maintained in proper operating condition. Written records of testing and maintenance must be, and this is where we added the additional language. 
submitted by the testing company in a form and format prescribed by the fire code official. So basically that's saying... It's saying the deputy chief is going to set the expectations for correct. what's required. Okay. Yep. Well, we have a... We have a I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead, Mike. Oh, I've got a... <clears throat> One I was going to bring up prior to this meeting, even, um, but I, I appreciate all the footwork that the DCs put into it, Pete, and, uh, and everything. But when we get a document like this, it would, it would, uh, um, I think it, it would show some support if uh, we could have that it was, um, or it was signed, that it was uh, concurrence of the chief that uh, we move forward with this. Just a formality, but that adds a little emphasis to it, and, and we know everybody's on the okay. same page. And okay. If we could do that at any time, you know, any time there's something involved with the PCs doing something, recommending that the chief concurs with it. Sure. Again. I'd like that. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Are we ready to vote? Myers? Yes. Earl. Yes. Nice. Yes. Gershman. Yes. Keel. Yes. Thank you. Uh, item 14, Police Department Activities, Training Reports, and Correspondence. Yes. Just a couple things to bring to your attention. From December, on uh, December 4th, we hosted a Coffee with a Cop. We did this at Mid-State Technical College. Uh, it was a great opportunity to meet with students at Mid-State. Uh, be able to interact with them, uh, answer any questions they had, and we're very appreciative of uh, the invitation to host that at their location. On the 7th of December, we had our fourth annual community appreciation event uh, downtown. We've historically done this in, um, in collaboration with Main Street Marshfield when they have one of their wine walks, uh, but what we do is uh, the Professional Police Association donates money that we purchase uh, burgers and hot dogs and hot chocolate or cider and we give that away to the community anyone in the community during certain hours just to say thank you for the continued support that we've had from our community on the 12th of december we had a um, our second shop with a cop event i think we had over 10 students that were able to spend $150 on both themselves and loved ones. Uh, these are individuals that are recommended to us by the schools as, um, and they feel would benefit most from this, I guess, community service offer. Uh, it was a really good event. We're appreciative of Target, Walmart, and Fleet Farm who had um, donated money along with um, our professional police association for that. And that's it I have um, as far as um, as far as activities. Good. Thank you. Any questions? Then we'll go on to item 15, residency change approval. Yes, I brought this forth last month. Uh, I was asked to bring some pros and cons last month, which I had supplied uh, to you, and then I was asked for this month to bring forth I guess an official request if we desire to have um, the residency restrictions lifted, um, which we do. Um, as I stated last month, uh, I believe this will add to a more diverse applicant pool. Um, it will allow applicants to potentially live closer to family geographically if the 15 miles is prohibiting that. Uh, and with some of the cons being that there could be weather delays if we're calling in additional staff or there may have to be I guess better planning for individuals living further away um, if there is inclement weather. This uh, what I included on 15A was our current labor contract. I've had conversations with the union and they would be willing to enter into a uh, memorandum of agreement saying that this is no longer being they're no longer held to that. What the contract says is ultimately that employees shall be allowed to reside within 15 miles straight line from the nearest city boundary um, no later than 60 days following the completion of their probation period. Probation period is one year, so 
historically they've had to within 14 months of hire have had to move within 15 miles of the city um, this 60-day window after probation could be extended by me if there were certain circumstances that um, caused the delay in that and we have had that um, we had an, we've had two individuals who actually lived outside of that 15 miles and were trying to sell a house so that they could move within the 15 miles one had a house in Nakusa and one had a house in um, in the town of Rome and um, that delay in being able to sell their house to an extent I mean um, allowed us to give them a little bit of leniency with that 60 days uh, ultimately both had to there, there came a time where both had to then move within the city and they still hadn't sold their house so I mean there was I guess a financial impact on both of those individuals they did ultimately one was probably five years ago one was I'd say about nine years ago so I mean those are financial impacts to those individuals when they can't sell their house but they're maybe only 25 or 30 miles away so um, there's that and then on 5b or 15b I'm sorry is the city policy and this I found a little interesting I put a, a, a star by what pertains to that but in our city policy it says uh, these provisions shall apply in the cases of the 15 mile radius ultimately um, shall apply in cases of employees with Marshfield Utilities, Marshfield Public Library, and Police and Fire Departments only if the governing body of those departments adopts a similar policy. Um, we don't have a similar policy in our policy manual, so we haven't adopted that 15 mile radius, I guess, per se, in the police department's um, policy manual. So ultimately, we I guess could adopt a policy saying that there are no restrictions but right now we don't have any policy saying that there are restrictions so I guess if I'm reading this right ultimately without having a policy um, adopting the 15 mile radius in essence we wouldn't need that I guess I'm just asking for your approval or your support and um, I guess working you know with the union ultimately what would happen if, if you guys supported this is um, we would draft a, a memorandum of agreement with the union we would pass that forth to finance budget personnel and it would ultimately get approved by the city council and then moving forward uh, individuals who desire to live outside of that 15 miles um, could do so so I know I threw a lot at you I know we talked about this last month I'd be happy to further discuss this but ultimately I'm looking for your approval comments and questions oh and 15C through 15H are a list of departments that either do or don't have residency. And I kind of made some marks on mine. 15E, right about where River Falls is, about two thirds of the way down the page, is kind of where the departments of our size start that are of our size, either personnel wise or population wise. And it shows a list of um, obviously multiple departments larger and smaller than us that don't have residency um, restrictions and then you'll see as you look through those some that do and some that have just more lenient than what we currently have okay comments Mike? <clears throat> Five reports. Um, you feel that this will help in recruiting um, officers is there um, a way that you will keep track of that you, you could come back to us two three four years from now and say the policy that you approve is working i guess you'd like to see yeah, i would I like think, to see it i think there's a way to track that mm -hmm. um you know obviously we track it by those that are taking advantage of it maybe mm -hmm. or maybe the the volume of um of applicants we receive but yeah i will definitely be happy to track that and share that out um, as time do you anticipate that any existing officers might move beyond that boundary if they're allowed to now? I've had those conversations and I those that want to live outside of the city or you know say recently mm -hmm. um, have recently built houses kind of just on the outer limits of that so I don't I don't foresee them um, okay. and I've had conversations with some of them I don't foresee them um, moving further out uh, it, it doesn't mean that some of our current employees that are maybe renting either in the city or just outside of the city wouldn't consider this but 
uh, as far as those that I know of that have houses outside of the city that they own their homes, um, none of them have suggested to me or even mentioned that they would sell and move further away. Okay. But like I said, some some could that are currently renting or you know if, if an opportunity arose that um, you know where a spouse received a job further and they wanted to kind of split the difference. It would be interesting to see that statistic along with sure. the other one yeah, uh, at some point down the road. That they either have or haven't moved out, right. and uh, we've hired some that were in that area. So, Definitely. all right, thank you, Mike. I <clears throat> I see the value in this, but I also see you know the possibility of something negative coming out of it, possibly. Um, and I, I guess what Gordy just recommended is a good thing. Um, I'll support it now because it seems to be we're capable of doing that as for the two departments. But um, here's a map of Jordan. I guess maybe if I'm, they won't be moving that far away. <laughs> <laughs> Lebanon, Damascus, you know, okay, boy, where they come from. Um, my next vacation. Um, I'll support it for now, but if this were to come up to be a problem, I'll be the first one to bring it back and look at it again. Um, because I, I think there is a certain amount of, that we depend on the members of these two departments to respond to our needs. And I I have a difficult time, you know, that some of them even mentioned that, you know, the SWAT teams and stuff like that. Well, you know, it's not going to do me much good as a citizen to be in the middle of something and we got to wait for some guy 20 miles away or 30 miles away to get here and then to get all loaded up with equipment and stuff and come to respond. So it, it's, there. there's enough cover, I mean, as far as other people that don't have that problem, but that's, those things are going to stick out if we have a response problem, and uh, you know we we don't have a handle on it because we don't require them to live within a certain area. So, and I I, I go back quite a ways where I can remember there was a residency requirement, and we actually let good people go because they couldn't meet their residency requirement. I've been involved with two of those I can think of right off the bat. It was back in the '80s, but good people and gave them two or three extensions and they just couldn't do it. And, you know, kind of feel feel bad for them now because now we're, we're lifting it. But, um, it's quite a while though, maybe they don't remember. So. I think it's just that maybe put some, give you some peace of mind on that. I mean, uh, in an emergency situation, I mean, yeah, we would rely on those officers working and we would probably, if we needed additional personnel, we would probably handpick those that are maybe in closest proximity if we need right away. Um, if it's a drawn out situation, uh, we're always going to need people to replace out those ones who, you know, have worked the last eight, 10, 12, 15 hours. Uh, and that obviously would give those maybe a, that are choosing to live further out more time to respond and, and such or more preparation with that. Uh, I can tell you that, uh, We've had SWAT call outs where individuals have, you know, do live further out and if we needed to get on scene, they just meet us there. Uh, or they've maybe been with their family in Wausau or Eau Claire or something and they just get there when they can get there. Uh, those situations come up um, now and, and we work around it. So I don't see it impacting response at all. I have a question. Would you tell me again what you will do if this body approves a no residency requirement? What I would do is I would um, go to finance with finance budget personnel with the um, memorandum of agreement between the union and um, I guess us that would ultimately agree to change or to have a letter of agreement with the con you know coupled with the contract saying that um, article 31 residency is no longer going to be um, implemented or our officers are no longer held to that 
And then when the contract is later, I believe our contract is up for negotiation at the end of this year. So what we would do is move forward into just making that permanent and probably removing Article 31, which is residency. That's an area that at some point is going to have to be, uh, I suppose, explored and resolved. This body makes policy. Right. So if we say there is no residency requirement, right. there is none. Right. It doesn't make any difference what anyone else does. We make policy. Right. And, and you're, I, I could be wrong with what I believe. I mean, this yeah. is what I believe would be the process. Um, this is one of those strange circumstances where ultimately policy, you know, may, or the, the lack of policy, because we don't have a policy explaining residency, the city does, but we don't, that may, the fact that we don't have that may trump what the contract says. Because in this instance, the contract's actually more stringent than what our policy, you know, reads or doesn't read. So it, it's different because I've, I can't think of another example that's similar to this to well, our... This is, this is another example, you're right. Yeah. Uh, I'm not certain that city policy on this matter affects the police and fire departments. Right, because it actually says in there that it doesn't, only it, it only affects it if, yeah. if, that's, if this body agrees to it. You know, again, my continuing concern about mm -hmm. the responsibilities of the commission as opposed to the city. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why um, a contract would have implemented something in which there wasn't a policy. It, why would that have? Was it misunderstanding of how city policy applies to this body? Yeah, there's two things. Either either that, or um, our current policy manual went live three, maybe four years ago. So our previous policy manual, and I could I could look back and bring that information if you're interested, or I can send out an email. Our previous policy manual that is no longer in effect may have had this policy in place. It just didn't carry over to our current policy manual. You know, it, it, it is, um, uh, Jennifer, it's the issue of city and commission's responsibilities for all of these matters. Um, You know, and if we, and I think we should at least discuss it with the city, and I think that's forthcoming. Um, you, you wish you could sort out every detail, but you can't because there are too many details to change as you're, you know. All right. Um, well, except, excuse me. Yeah. Except the point you're, you're bringing up was, was listed on that 15B that says, um, provisions for residency uh, they're giving the two departments the olive right there by saying that if the governing boards of those departments were to adopt a similar or whatever yeah. policy but we're, we're not we're, we're saying this is the way it's going to be and yeah you know, it's our preference to not have a residency requirement anymore. so we're not we're not bucking them and they're not telling us what to do we're just telling them what we're going to do so that would be for both departments is what we're talking about. We're talking about policy for police and fire. Yeah. Yep. Um, we do not have a motion on the table to do anything. You do someone want to make a motion? Motion. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Um, and we're talking about removing a re residency requirement for the police department. Uh, roll call. Myers? Yes. Earl? Yes. Meese? Yes. Gershman? Yes. Heal. Yes. Thank you. That's settled. Next item on our agenda is review and approval of patrol, universe, uh, patrol uniform shorts policy. And the policy as it's been presented says cargo shorts. Can't I wear anything but cargo shorts? You? No. <laughs> <laughs> You work at the pleasure of the commission. <laughs> I know, I know, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, on 16C, you'll see where <laughs> policy was, a sentence was added in there where it says cargo shorts may be worn in lieu of uniform pants during the months of May through September. 
and upon approval of the chief or designee. Um, obviously, they have to be in compliance with what we would expect um, to include, you know, the, the length of the inseam and such. And um, without being too stringent and, and, and such, we just said, okay, well, we'll, we'll determine that on, you know, based on as, as things move forward. So um, this was, this would need to go into policy after we did have our um, trial period and it was um, appreciated and, and taken advantage of by a handful of officers. So I would look for your approval on that policy, changing, um, allowing officers to wear shorts during those months. Seriously, cargo shirts, why not be uniform compatible? Uh, why cargo? I think that's what most manufacturers label them as based on the number of pockets that they have. A lot of the pants, and this wouldn't be for class A uniform that they're, uh, you know, responding, you know, attending a funeral in or going to court in. This would be just the everyday class B uniform um, ability to wear those um, shorts. And right now, they, most of them wear cargo pants um, with the multiple pockets, similar to what the firefighters um, wear on duty. Um, so that terminology was just carried over from what many of the manufacturers call it. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Comments or questions? <laughs> no, you don't want to hear one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I would like to. But it just brings to mind when you measure, when you talk about measuring the acceptable, it just brings back the old Catholic school nuns and having them girls <laughs> measuring their skirts up from the floor and it's just don't, <laughs> sorry don't don't I digress we need Earl. Earl. <laughs> Myers uh, yes Earl yes Mies. yes Gershman yes Keel yes thank you once the camera goes off off I I've got a story but not <laughs> <laughs> uh, 17 item, uh, 17th item on our agenda is discussion about the uh, uh, commissioner attendance at um, common council meetings. Uh, Lord, are you yes, that was me. I asked Peggy to put it on because I'd like to discuss it. Um, I have attended two meetings now as a commissioner, and uh, invariably I, walking in the door of the council meetings, I get asked the question, why are you here? Um, uh, I attended the one in December, the city administrator asked me why I was there, a number of my colleagues on the council asked me why I was there. It's almost like they're expecting uh, the commissioner uh, uh, in attendance to either do a presentation or ask questions or something, and invariably you just sit there. Uh, and to me it's a two hour waste of time. Why are we going there? Is there something in the past? that required that um, commissioners of the police and fire commission uh, had to be there, did they answer questions, did they do presentations? If, if the only purpose for us is to go there and sit, why are we doing that? These council meetings run from two to four hours. I, I spent a number of four hour meetings when I was on the council. Do you want to do that? I mean, well, I find it better than anything on television. Oh boy, oh boy, you need to get a different TV. I, I, uh, I find okay. it. I, Marty, let's ask Mike, because Mike's the history. Well, all right. Why are we all? Mike, why are we there? Well, it used, it used to be more for when they. Now they do the. Uh, consent agenda. Consent agenda, and then like bang, it's done. Yeah, you just walk and as far as I'm concerned, if I were to go to a meeting to represent the commission, I would leave after that happened. Because I don't care to sit through any right. meetings either. Right. But um, there was an open, there were some communication problems between the Water and Light and the council and between Fire and Police and the council. And there's even a, there's even a item on the agenda for communications with departments or, or especially the police and fire or the water and light. And what we're expected to do at some point in time is go up and just come kind of give them an update on what's going on in the commission or, or you know, water and light's the same. If, if Eber wants to go up there and tell them something that they're doing in water and light, that's the opportunity to do that, but that's an item on the agenda. And um, I often do it with, I don't spend any more time there than they really have to. Most of the time I did, but I, I I didn't, uh, 
the city clerk that evening uh, said to me, you're the only one that comes to these meetings. And I said, no, I, I know I'm not because when I was on the council, I remember seeing you there. Uh, I remember seeing Andy there. Uh, I don't remember seeing either one of you there, but I maybe wasn't looking for you either. Um, so I, I guess I'm just lost. Why are we, why are we doing this? If they want us to come, why don't they uh, approach us prior to the, the council meeting and say we would like some presentation, we would like to ask a question, whatever, rather than us automatically being there and just leaving after they have approved the consent agenda. That Gordy, can I interpret your comments as if we don't have a reason for being there, let's not do it anymore? Yeah, that's really what it amounts to. Okay. Jennifer, you haven't had an opportunity to say anything. I, I agree. <laughs> if, if there's a if there's an agenda item, if there's something that we need to address, I, uh, otherwise I think we all have two hours of our lives that we can use more wisely. Or four. Or four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you're not on there, they're much shorter. Oh, I'm sure they are. <laughs> 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 I'm sure they are. Randy, what about you? What do you think? My experience has always been if the council wanted an explanation, they go to the chiefs or they give us prior to the saying that they want uh, either the commission the president or someone else. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that we have a formal policy that some uh, one of us has to be there. I no, I don't think there is. I think it's just really done as a courtesy to the council. Is there a consensus then that we no Stop. longer feel obliged to attend council meetings? I, I would. I think that would be true. At least in my case, I think that's true. Mike, you're okay with that? Yeah. We know Gordy is. Yeah. Well, I hate giving up what I consider to be a good, wholesome entertainment, but. Um, <laughs> you, uh, can still you can still go. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the TV. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can still go if I want to. Sure, yeah. you can. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good album, they sold popcorn or something. <laughs> Yeah. What a good idea. Um, all right. Uh, I think we've uh, got a consensus of the commission that we uh, no longer feel obliged to attend council meetings. We'll go if we're asked or if there's something that's of interest. Good. That's settled. Any other business to bring before the assembly? Thank you all very much for being here this morning. And uh, as we have no new business, uh, I'll declare that we are adjourned.